friends. I am down in my unfinished basement. Um, it is February and I need a place to start some seeds. Um, we moved to this property last year and got a really late start on like the seed starting season, growing season. Um, we were really focusing on putting in the infrastructure for this property, putting in irrigation, building raised beds, that sort of thing. We had to have a lot of dirt hauled in. Um, so I actually didn't start seeds last year until I think it was like late May, June. And so I did most of it um, in my garage and outside because the temperatures were already warm um, and a lot of direct sowing too. So anyways, it's February and cold outside. So I need a more controlled environment to grow all my little plants and seedlings. All right, so this is the space um, that I wanna set up my seed starting area. It's just an alcove of our basement. It is right next to the exterior door. So it'll be perfect when it's time to harden off the seedlings. I'll be able to just walk them right out there. We also have access to a frost-free spigot out there. Um, so that'll be good for watering. And that washer and dryer is not in use. It's just an extra set. And pretty much this whole area is just being used for storage. So I thought I'd clear everything out, um, clean it up, and then show you the process of setting it up. It's gonna be very simple. It's just gonna be some wire shelving units with some grow lights. Um, I do have this potting table that I will use to put my potting tray on and I'll be able to pot the seedlings up right down here and put them on the shelves. Let's get started. So I got the space all cleaned out, emptied out. The washing machine was a little bit heavier than I anticipated, but not too bad. Um, quite a few dozen spiders. Um, gotta love country living. But now I am all set to set up my shelves. So let's get going. I've got the shelves assembled and set up, I think, where I want them for now. Um, got my potting table right in front. So now it is time to go get all my seed starting supplies, my trays, my soil, um, all that fun stuff. most of my seeds starting supplies in. Um, I thought I'd go through them and um, just show you what I use to start seeds. I know everyone has uh, their preferences. This is just what I have um, come to find works best for me. Okay, so underneath my potting table, I have um, some of my seed trays. Um, I have, I wanted to show you guys these. These are some inexpensive ones um, that you can pretty much find any of the box stores are on Amazon and I thought I'd show you they're a great inexpensive affordable option if you are just getting started and don't know if you're going to really get into gardening and seed starting and just want something to kind of 
trial it out without investing too much money. But if you do um, plan to garden long term and start seeds, I would not recommend these mainly because they are so incredibly flimsy. Um, which you can see, I didn't even clean these from last season because I don't plan on reusing them. Um, but they are so, so thin, so flimsy that half the time when you um, take your plant out, they break. Um, this one's a little bit better. This is a 70 um, cell seed tray. Um, it's a little bit sturdier, but you can see it's still pretty flimsy. Um, I could reuse this, but these six packs, I mean, they're a great option if you just want to try a few and get into it, but, um, aren't wanting to invest, um, more money for the long term. Um, like I said, this one, I think I found it on Amazon. I have a few of these. I'll only use them if I have to. Okay, so this year, um, I'm really excited. I asked my family um, to get me some seed starting trays for Christmas, and they were kind enough to do that. Um, so I invested in some of Bootstrap Farmers um, seed starting um, trays. I don't know if you're familiar with Bootstrap Farmer, but they are incredible. All of their, um, their plastic is just, I don't know what thickness it is, but... I mean, if you can just tell, they are very thick walled and very sturdy, and these will just last for many, many seasons. So these are little pots that um, go in these trays. This is 32 cell um, count, and I might use these for some things that like might be in um, inside a little bit longer before I can move them out. Um, I'm thinking more like my tomatoes or peppers. Um, and then these are 50 cell, um, and they are, I mean, they're roughly about the same size. I mean, if you can look, the diameter of these are probably two inch by two inch, and these are like one and a half. So they're bigger than your um, traditional 72 cell count tray, um, which will be great because they can last a little bit longer before I have to pot them up. Um, and these are the trays, the 10 by 20 trays that go underneath, which are great. I need to take the tape off and show you, but they are just so sturdy. Um, I don't know if you can tell in, the, in this video, but the plastic is just a really thick quality. Um, they're gonna last me for a very long time, which I'm excited about. So if you plan to start seeds for many years, I would highly recommend investing in Bootstrap Farmers. Um, equipment. They just have a lot of options, a lot to choose from, and they are just a really high quality. But again, they are an investment up front. So up here I have my potting tray, which just keeps my soil contained when I'm potting things up inside. I've got my gloves, my Felcos. I am a lefty. So what are these? These are Felco 16s. Um, they are in serious need of cleaning. I left them outside. It's really embarrassing, um, but they, <laughs> they still work. I just need to clean them. Um, I have my trusty garden marker and some plant tags and my watering can. So these are basic seed starting supplies, but the most important thing, of course, is our grow lights. Since we are starting seeds inside, we do need grow lights. Okay, so I've got my grow lights all assembled. You can see right there over my shoulder. I'm at a good stopping point for today. I need to get some chain so that I can suspend them from the wire shelving units. Um, and I totally spaced on picking that up beforehand. So I'm gonna have to run to the store and get that. I've got pretty much all my supplies here ready to go. Um, just really looking forward to the growing season um, as all of us gardeners can relate. Just the anticipation of spring um, and the warmth and the flowers and the beauty and all that it entails. It just, it just excites me. I live for it. So most of the things that I plan to start inside here will be my vegetables, some of my fruits like watermelon, cantaloupe, um, a lot of my annuals, my cut flowers, that sort of thing. Um, beyond that, I will do the winter sowing method, um, which I will show you in another video. And I plan to use that for lots of our perennials that I plan to start. I have way too many seeds and I've probably given myself more work um, than I should, but uh, it's just it's so exciting. I can't resist. Um, so we'll pick up tomorrow once I get the chain and get the grow lights hung. Hey, so it's the next day. I ran to Lowe's last night and got some S hooks and some chains to suspend the grow lights. So now let's get those set up.
I'm so excited. It's coming along. So here is one of my seed trays. And so this would be a great starting height um, to help the seeds germinate, especially if they require light to germinate and those that don't require light to germinate. Um, I could just leave them off until they do germinate and then we just start to raise them as the plants grow. So it would look kind of like this. Pull that loop up, pull this one up about roughly the same height. And now the grow lights are higher. This is so exciting. I'm so excited. I love how it's turning out. Now I only have, uh, what, seven more shelves to go. So I've got the shelves and the grow lights all set up. It did take a little bit of um, reconfiguring the connecting cables and the power supply because just the way I needed to run the extension cord, um, I needed all the plugs on this side. Um, there is definitely a jumble of cords that I need to tidy. Um, <laughs> my husband is like the neat freak with cords and the planner, and he wanted me to plan out all the like plugs and um, power strip beforehand. I was like, no, I'll just wing it. Um, and I had to redo everything that I did as far as the connection. So, you know, sometimes it pays to plan. I wish I plan was a planner, but <laughs> more often than not, I just wing it. Um, each of these grow lights has its own, um, toggle switch to toggle on and off. So I could turn off, you know, a whole shelf if I don't have anything growing up there. Um, so that's nice, that'll conserve electric. Um, but I wanted to show you the other options you have to hang these. They do come with, um, these are like 3M double-sided stickies. So if you had a solid shelf and you didn't wanna raise and lower your lights, um, you could just stick them on to the underside of the shelves. They also give you zip ties to be able to do the same thing. Um, and then the other option that comes with these lights are um, like a mounting bracket and screws. But again, with that, you lose the ability to raise and lower your lights, which is not a big deal um, because you can always bring your plants up to your light. Like I said, you could use books, um, old boxes, you know, just different items to kind of prop your um, plants up to bring them closer to the light when they're little so they don't stretch and get leggy. I'm a little behind in starting seeds um, from where I want to be. So hopefully I can get some seeds planted up in the next couple of days and start growing. All right, my grow room is finished. I'm thrilled with how it turned out. Um, it's very simple, basic setup, but it is gonna suit me and my um, gardening needs for the upcoming growing season very well. Um, I plan to start some seeds in the next couple of days and start my winter sowing, which I will take you along with me for those. So be on the lookout for those videos. I really appreciate you watching and thanks for gardening with me.